I shall not. Look at the last word, want. Somebody say want. The word want means lack. So what he's really saying to me, what David is really saying, because Jesus is my shepherd, I won't need anything. How many of y'all want to get to a place that you know that Jesus got you so much that you don't need nothing in 2023? Will they cry out to God and say, you are a burden lifter. God, you are my shepherd that I don't want for anything. God, you are the head. And I'm not the tail. You are the lifter up of my head. That's how you know and find out about me. I heard the Lord say in my spirit, this is an unshakable house. Doing horizontal. And if you watch a lot of times, we worship people more than we worship God. How many of y'all don't tell the truth? How many of y'all know that? We have become a society that is more concerned about everybody else and what they got and what they're doing and even what they're wearing. And it's just, I mean, some of this stuff, I'm like, honey, we wore this stuff 40 years ago. The hairstyles y'all wearing now, we had them. And people just act like every little thing needs to be worshipped. It has to be recognized. Now we become a, I gotta be seen society. I mean, I don't tell the truth, right? We just, we gotta be seen for every little thing. And you know where that comes from? Because we don't know who we are. Because when you know your value, you ain't got to tell nobody your value. I know when I go in the store, I remember when I was in uh, working for the hotel and my general manager, our general manager was a gentleman that was really big on clothing. And I remember we were, uh, um, and this is not to be insulting, this was about 35, 36 years ago uh, before I started pastoring. And um, I used to admire his, his suits and everything. And so I remember, uh, one day we were having a manager's uh, gathering that evening. And so the next day, you know, I felt like I was clean. I felt like I was dressing pretty nice. I felt like the suit I had on was nice. And I remember him calling me in the office. Gregory, come in the office. Very true story. And I said, yes, Mr. Uh, Will Rodney. He said to me, he said, uh, who's that suit by you had on last night? And I, some, I don't know, remember, I think it was a brand from, Back then from Macy's, I had bought the suit from Macy's about almost 35 years ago. And he just bust out with the word. He said, garbage. And I said, excuse me? No, he did. He said, garbage. He was German. He said, garbage? He said, yeah, that's garbage you win. That stuff ain't no good. And I said, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, that's where I shop. He said, you know. I said, well, I need you to shop somewhere else. And he made a phone call. This is the honest truth. He made a phone call. He said, I want you to walk up the street. Like we worked, I worked in the Marriott on Cortland downtown. And two, two streets up is the main street, Peace Street Street. And there's the Western Hotel. Everybody know about the Western, Peace Street Western Hotel. But at the bottom of it was a company called H. Stockton. And he said, I want you to go up here and see this gentleman here. And I want you to begin to learn. And I'm going to teach you about fabrics. And so he began to teach me every type of fabric. They made in shirts and clothing, suits, what was good, what was not good. And I began to think about that, and I started thinking about that today, how detailed he was about how he represented. But I began to think to myself, I asked him a question one time, why is it so important that I know the fabric of every suit or different suits and this and that. He said, because you represent. He said, you're a preacher, right? I said, I'm a preacher. He said, well, how do you go to church? You know, back then, we don't dress like we dress now. Today, everybody dresses mainly casual. But back then, you know, everybody wore their Sunday vests. Come on, you know how it was. You know, today, we, you know, we're, we're a little different today. I'll leave that alone. We'll talk about that another time. Because, you know, you, you can see a lot of preachers, they don't wear suits anymore because, you know, and because people say the way it is society. But, but he said to me, he said, you wear, you wear a suit on Sundays, right? I said, I do. And he said, why do you wear it? I said, because I just think representing God should be at my best. He said, but if you represent God only at your best and what you wear, and you don't represent him on the inside. Come on, somebody, right? 
And so, that's when four people clap, because why y'all, why some of y'all mean mugging me this morning? <laughs> I'm not going to change my sermon. But, so, I want to talk about today, and I want every one of us to just give yourself an opportunity to be open to this sermon today. I want you, you might have said, hey, I can't be church to come here or something else. Well, no, you can't be church to hear whatever God's going to say. And so today, I really believe that the Lord wants to talk to us about, and how many of you would really like to get to a place in your walk that God does love your worship of him? How many of you want, every time you worship God, how many of y'all want God to really receive your worship? So, I want to talk about this because I think it's important for the church. And so my sermon is called Unashamed Adoration. Unashamed. What's the word unashamed mean? Not embarrassed easily. Why are people so embarrassed? Y'all come on now, help me out. Help me out today, y'all speak up. How come people are so embarrassed when it comes to church and lifting their hands, opening their mouth, even moving around in church? But they ain't got no problem with what they do in the world. Some of us twerk. Help, help me out. Some of y'all still twerk. I mean, it takes a lot to, a boldness. I just leave it at that. <laughs> to twerk. And every time you look up somebody that's popular, somebody's twerking. Uh, using particular parts of your body to make it be known. So y'all look up, ain't nothing on the ground. Stop there, the same color. Stop holding your head down. I, no, 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 ain't nothing on the carpet. It's still the same color. It's been clean, but it's still the same color. You've been coming here. But we are ashamed when it comes down to worshiping God. I've watched people literally have the fire of God be on them. And they're so stubborn, they won't even allow him to have their way. It's way on them. We used to pray in public. Pray about food at the restaurant. Now we're ashamed. What are we ashamed of? Why are we so embarrassed when it comes down to the things of God, but we are so bold when it comes down to things of our flesh? I still bless my food. Well, you're a preacher. Well, you're a Christian. You say you love God. And the way some of the food we get served, you better pray over it. So when you think about the word adoration, the meaning is deep love, great respect, reverence, and worship. So when you are vertically worshiping, that means that you're literally focused on God. But sometimes our worship is not always vertical. Because a lot of times when we're in church, in the middle of worship, we start thinking about what we're dealing with. Right? How many of y'all, y'all ever was worshiping God, and all of a sudden you look up, and next thing you know, your thoughts are about what you're dealing with. How many of y'all know the enemy gets in your mind and starts messing with your feelings and messing with your, your past? And, and then what he does is he makes your worship go from being vertical to being horizontal, because before you know it, it is no longer about God, it's about you or what people have done to you, or what life have done to you. And, and the enemy knows because if all of us lock in on vertical worship in church, if all of us come to church in worship and have the same mindset and worship God from a vertical perspective, the presence of God will manifest in this house greater than we can ever imagine. Come on, somebody, right? But, it, but you know, 
How many of y'all know it is, so, it, it, it is so evident that when you sit beside somebody, they sit there stiff, they don't want to lift their hands up, they won't even open their mouth up and try to sing, they won't stand, they won't do anything, but they'll go to a concert in the world and, oh my God, and you... And how can you worship a celebrity more than you worship God? Where is it, God? When are we going to get back to being church? And not just coming, doing something. So we can tell somebody, I went to church. What did you do on Sunday? Went to church. Really? Yeah. Sermon good? Yeah, pretty good. What else? Just went to church? Good sermon. You know, they can always ask for your money. Grocery store asks for your money every time you go. Georgia Power, whoever light company you with, ask for your money every month. Gas companies, water companies, ask for your money every month. Rent, ask for your money every month. So when your vertical is having a line is such that the top, it is directly above the bottom, it's, it's right up. And how many of y'all know, how many of y'all really think that I've been too preoccupied with so many things that my worship has not been as vertical as it should be? Do I have anybody here today, right? And my, it has not been as, it's more horizontal than it is vertical. Do I have anybody with me today? Come on, help me out today, right? How many of you know that your worship needs to get back to being vertical? Come on, I want to hear somebody today. How many of you know your worship needs to go back to being vertical? Because how many of you know that we are so consumed? And let me tell you how the enemy is so good with this. I'm not going to hold you long. Let me tell you how good the enemy is with this, right? Because he knows that as long as our worship is horizontal, we cannot have a greater level of expectation from God. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about a few things this morning to make you understand. And, 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 and give you a prime example. Y'all say this in a sentence with me. I'm going to put it up here. Everybody read what this says real quick. We're going to say it in a sentence. God's son, come on, everybody building, come on, what does it say? God's son. So when God's son is fervently worshipped in spirit and in truth, what happens? It brings the manifestation of the Holy Spirit at a greater level. Now, you know, you don't want to admit this, but you know, we have gotten so used to having church, we don't even really care if God shows up. As long as we got a good sermon, there's some good word music going on, and I can go out the door and think about a few things. But what about the manifestation of the presence of God so somebody can be healed? What about the manifestation of the presence of God that somebody can be delivered, right? Because church is no longer about God. It's really about what we want. And really the worship is on us now. It's really not on God like it used to be. And how many of y'all know the worship needs to go back to God because if the church is going to be the way God called it to be and if the church is going to get the benefits that God wants us to have, we will never get it if we don't stop, get out of this horizontal worship. Amen. How many of y'all know I'm telling the truth today, right? If there's areas in your life that you struggle in, probably longer than you should struggle, I got to say this. If there's areas in your life that you are struggling in longer than you should, it's probably because you worship that area more than you worship God. Oh, we're going to go there. Yeah, you, you see people say, I'm trying to get delivered, and, and, and what are they trying to get delivered from? And you say, well, all this power, all this God, why can't they be delivered? And if you watch them, they worship what they're going through. People say, no, 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 yes, you are. You are consumed what you're going through. You are consumed with this relationship. You are consumed with your behavior. And you don't even know it, that even though it is an idol worship, even though it's not nothing you should be worshiped, you have made it into a false god, Come on, right? Because it runs your life. And then, so what God says is, since that runs your life, then you got to be blessed by that which runs your life. And you will find out that idolatry will never bless your life. It will stag your life. It will kill your life. It will hinder your life. Let's, let's go a little further. 
What people don't understand is worship is the most powerful thing you can do. It is the most powerful thing that you can do as a human being. But the most powerful thing you can do as a human being is worship God. Now watch this. So here's a gentleman. I want to put him up. I want you here. But let's go back to these two questions first. I, want, I, I know y'all's like, why? Wait, wait. I'm going to show you why I put him up there. And why would anybody put him up there? Let me tell you a minute. But these are two questions I want to ask you. What does God bless? And what do people want in church? What do you think God blesses? And then what do you think people really come to church for? What does God bless? And why do you come to church? And what do you want to probably take notice of? That, that should be the same answer. But it's two different answers. You would be surprised that what God blessed ain't what you come to church for. You'd be shocked that what you come to church for, God ain't blessing. Some of us, why? Because we don't come for what God wants to bless. We don't come to church for what God wants to bless. We come to church to tell God what he should bless. You should be happy, God, that I came to church. And God said you should be happy that you're alive, that you can consider coming to church. <laughs> there are people that want to be in church that can't get to a church there are people that are homeless without and the church supposed to be in the, in the position that it can be a blessing but the first thing the people need to come to the church and see because as we talked about the lame man at the gate every day begging for money but it was Peter and John that finally showed him what you come to church for and that was God and so instead of giving him money what everybody else is giving him money he had to give him what he needed more than anything and that was God we really should be coming to church for God and not come to church just to get blessed and the reason why our worship is so inconsistent is because we, we go by our worshiping God based on how blessed we feel or how good we feel or what or things are going right or things are not going right. I don't really feel like it. But how many of y'all, oh, I wish I had some help in today. But how many of us have stayed in relationship that ain't going well, but we keep having the faith to stay in it? We, oh, I'll come on somebody, right? We keep finding a way to let them know I love you even though I don't approve of what you're saying. But here's a God that ain't never done you wrong. I do not worship God on my mood. My mood can't be trusted. How y'all know your mood can't be trusted? I don't worship God on my mood. I don't worship God based on how much money is in my account. I don't worship him based on what I'm driving. All of that is wonderful. I don't worship him just because I got a job. I worship him because he's God Almighty. Because I can worship him when I'm broke. Shabbat Korabas. I won't stop worshiping him when I become rich. I won't change my worship to become horizontal. You know, some folk don't know how to get blessed because as soon as they get a little something, they worship the God, stop. They don't want to come to church. They find everything, why? Because when I found out, baby, he's God when I'm broken, he's God when I'm rich.
Anytime, let me hurry up. I'm going to get the scriptures. Anytime, because what we don't understand is pride is running churches now. And pride has only one view, idolatry. When the church walk in the spirit of pride, the church has become idolatry. The worship becomes false. Because pride makes you believe you're doing that person a favor more than that person is doing you a favor. And there's so much pride in church now, it's almost ridiculous. And, and, and the people are ignoring the scripture about pride because the Bible says pride comes before fall. And, and, and there are a lot of people don't fail. And when you ask them why you fail, they can't tell you why you fail. They fail because they don't want to hear it. But really the reason why they fail is because pride got in them. Come on, somebody say, because you can even be proud for why you're going through. You can be so powerful that you won't ask for help. Oh, I wish I had some help in there. You can be so powerful, you'll keep living in what you fell in that because you won't ask to get delivered. That's the spirit of pride. Because your mind get made and you become what you fall into and you make it an idol. Because what you fall into, you keep saying, it ain't going to get no better. I, every time I try, I, I still fail. And God said, eventually you're going to worship that. And pride makes you keep worshiping that. So watch this. So here's a gentleman doing World War II, and I'm a big historian. I, I love history. And uh, everybody knows he's not popular. <laughs> but most of us only know <laughs> that uh, he's evil, racist, killed millions and millions of Jews all because of their nationality. Killed more than Jews, though. When you study his history, he hated a lot of people. He hated more than you thought he hated. But I, I put the picture of him up, not because he deserved it, but because he deserved it. He needs to be talked about in a different form. I'm not here to preach racism, because all of us got different nationalities, whether you want to admit it or not. No, seriously, I, I, I'm not prejudiced anyway. It couldn't be that way anyway. Just I, I don't know how anybody can, but it is what it is. But at the end of the day, here's a gentleman who has the ability to get people to follow him to a point that they're just completely oblivious to what's going on. And so I watched this man get people to follow him, murder people, millions and millions of people, but i tell you what got me about him. And Deacon Richard can tell you because he's a historian. He's, aren't you history, right? Aren't you an AP history teacher? So he can tell you a lot, so he knows what I'm saying is true. He knows a whole lot more than I do in terms of history, but here's what I want to share with you. What really bothered me about him when I thought about worship was this. Even though he was murdering folk, he was worshipped as a leader. That when he drove by, women were crying. Just by him passing by. <laughs> he became worshipped so much that they said that when he was stepped on a piece of grass, they would cut out the piece of grass that he stepped on and they would hold it as a memorial. Anyway, his feet touched. People were cutting up pieces of the ground where his feet touch so they could have pieces of him. It don't make a difference that he's murdering folk. It doesn't make a difference that millions and millions of people have lost their lives behind this crazy person. And, and so I began to think about that and said, and God said, why are you so surprised when I read that? He said, Gregor, why are you so surprised? He said, it might not be someone at this magnitude. But he said, Gregor, think about all the worship y'all gave. That belongs to me that y'all gave to somebody else. Oh, it's quiet now. Just think about, just for a moment, I, I'm not trying to be funny. Just think about what you're worshiping. And see if you have equalized it to God. He said, no, 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 no. Uh, just, just think for a moment. Just think for a moment. <laughs> Let me give you a prime example. How long have you been dealing with this hurt? And what you want to bet, God been wanting to heal you. But you have now made it your admiration of worship. 
Because there are people that admire the hurt that they live in. No, I can't be because I cry all the time. No, no, no. You've gotten so used to what it feels like to cry all the time from the hurt until the point now you have made it your idol. And, and you say, well, no, 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 no. I don't worship it. No, 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 no. That's, that's, I, I, I hate to say that. You might want to rethink that because well, a lot of us are worshiping what we've been through because we can't come away from it. Yeah. It, it, it controls our thoughts of the future. It controls our thoughts of the present. It controls our thoughts of the past. People say, well, no, how's that true? Hey, let somebody who worships you and watch. It's not the first thing you say to them. You don't say hi, even though they say I'm sorry. The first, you, you might say hi out your mouth, but your mind is not saying hi. The first thing your mind is saying is, oh, yeah, that's right, you're the one. And the enemy say, yeah, you remember how they hurt you. You remember what they did to you. You remember what they did. You remember how they acted. You remember what they, has said, what they said. And so even though you're saying hi, and even though you're saying that you, you, you forgave them, and you're saying, you know, how you're doing in, the, in your subconscious mind, you have already built a throne for that hurt, and you worship it every day by reminding yourself how you've been through and why God let you go through this, and why would he take you through this, and why would he let you get hurt like this? And God is saying, you so busy worrying about what you've been through, you forgot the one that brought you out. I look at some people and I say, wow, you are so powerful. You are so anointed. But you are so stuck. You have all this ability. You have all this anointing on your life. But you are so full of excuses. <laughs> you can be so awesome for life. Not only in the church, but in the marketplace, but you can't stop worshiping you. You could be somebody's great wife or husband, but you can't stop worshiping your soul tie. Your past. I don't know why I can't get married. That ain't all just God. Sometimes it's your worship. Uh-oh, y'all quiet, come on, come on. That's why I counsel couple, and the first thing, one of, as soon as one say, and I'm going to tell you now, I ain't going through what I've been through and paid. Okay, stop, we ain't getting married nowhere. Stop, ain't going to be no, ain't going to be no weddings. I'm not marrying nobody like that. Why? Because, see, ain't nobody going to be doing all that. If you, ain't no need you marrying somebody if you got to bring up what somebody else did to you in the past. It's okay for you to have standards, but ain't nobody putting up with all that. Ain't nobody dealing with all that. Right? Ain't, ain't, ain't no, now come on here, ain't nobody ain't going to drink no lemonade with no lemons in it. Oh, y'all can look around. I don't care. <laughs> so, know what I tell them? Let's get healed first. I understand that we practice divorce. Uh oh. In these relationships. And when they don't work out, we leave fragments of our soul everywhere. And then we expect somebody to marry with our fragment self. Worship. Most powerful thing we can do. Here, come on, let's move forward. Am I saying something today, somebody? So St. John 4 and 23, let's go here. Oh boy. I am doing everything in my power today to let idolatry know you coming down. Anybody ready for it to come down? Look what he says in this. He said, but a time is coming. How many of y'all say now? Somebody say now. now. A time is coming and it is already here when the true worshiper, right, will worship the Father in spirit from the heart, the inner self, and truth. For the Father seeks such people to be his worshiper. God is spirit, the source of life, 
yet invisible to mankind, and those who worship him must do what, everybody? Worship him. Let me hear you. Must worship him what? In spirit. Now, who is he telling this to? Who is he telling this to? Who was he talking to when he said it? He was talking to the woman. What woman was he talking to? The woman who he showed up at the well with. And the woman was coming out getting water at the time when the other women wasn't getting water because they were gossiping about her. So she would come out in the middle of the day when it's the most extreme hot heat time when most of the women got their water early in the morning and that's when they would have their little gathering and their little gossip time. But there was gossiping about her so bad, watch this right, that she started getting her water while it was hot. Because she couldn't stand the, the heat of the gossip. But then something particular happened to her that set her up. She had an unexpected appointment. I, I love that about God. I love that when you don't think God wants to show up in your life, there are times he'll show up anyway. I like the fact that God shows up even in your worst moment. So Jesus says to her, hey, give me some water. She said, no, 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 y'all don't talk to us, the, the kind of nationality you are, plus you being a man. Y'all don't normally talk to her, but Jesus is like, I'm not that man. Come on, somebody, right? That's the understanding of what kind of Savior we serve. So when she gives him a drink of water, he said, matter of fact, go get your husband. And she says, he hits her, because what does he do when God is trying to make your worship stop being tainted, when he wants your worship to go back to being vertical instead of horizontal? Sometimes he pulls a mirror out in front of you. All right, I wish I had some help up in the day. So he pulls a mirror out in front of her and say, go get your husband. See, I want you to see yourself. I want you to see where your worship is at. I want you to see what you've been worshiping. Go get your husband. I ain't got no husband. Sometimes before your worship can become pure, God got to hit you what you're trying to hide. Pulls up the mirror. He said, I know you're embarrassed about this. That's why I'm asking you. Because when God wants your worship to start being focused on him, because you understand he's a loving God. You understand he's a graceful God. You understand that he's a merciful God. See, the reason why some of us, our worship is warped because of the way you see God. And if you see God as a bully and you see God as only the way you see him, no wonder you can't worship him. No wonder he can't have all your worship. But if you really saw all of who God is, if you saw what God really is and who he really is and what his character really is, your worship would be so out of control that folk would have to tell you to put your hand down. But because you don't have a good view of him based on what you're dealing with. He pulls the mirror out. He said, because before I can get you to worship me in spirit and truth, I got to get you to go talk the truth about yourself. He pulled out the mirror. He said, hey, Brittany, go get your husband. Now, Brittany had five husbands. I'm just using her for example. I don't know how many husbands Brittany had, but she ain't had five. How many husbands have you had? I'm just kidding. Just kidding. But, uh, It don't matter. So he pulls up the mirror. He points it to her. She looks at the mirror in his conversation. He says to her, go get your husband. She says, I don't have a husband. He's like, you know, you don't. Because you had five and the one you living with ain't yours. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Let me leave that alone. Uh-oh. Ooh, ooh. Now listen, if this, is, this, if this is bothering you, just look at the wall real quick and turn back. Don't pay no attention because it ain't supposed to do that. Immediately she says to him, you must be a prophet. Sometimes when God is trying to get your worship to come back in its right direction, he got to make you 
see if you really know who he is. So she said, you must be a prophet. She had part of it right. But she missed the big point. The reason why our worship is not as authentic as it should be because we're looking at all the small things about God, like he blessed me. I got a new car. God gave me, uh, God gave me, you know, a, a place to stay. Oh, I got another raise on my job. And God said, is that all you see me as? No wonder your worship is horizontal. Because anybody can give you a car, anybody can give you a house, anybody can do all of that, but that's not who all I am. And so the reason why your worship is still horizontal is because you still don't see me as who I really am. Because you base your worship on how much you got, how good you feel, how happy God has made you, how life is going for you. And I don't care if hell is beating on your door. He still deserves to be worshiped as God. Man. Imagine being without work. I'm going to hurry up. Am I saying something today, somebody? Imagine being without work. I'm sorry to be so emotional about it. But I, I just really, thank you. I just really, I was thinking about this morning. I'm like, man, I remember a period of time when I wasn't working. And I said, instead of worrying, I should have been worshiping. And instead of frustrated, I, I should have been fighting. Oh, my God. Instead of being depressed, I should have been deliberate. But my worship was horizontal. So, can I use this example? I'm going to hurry up. Who in here right now need a job? Stand for me. Just stand real quickly. I'm, I'm not going to hold you long. Not, it's not embarrassing. I want you to do me a favor. Why are you looking for a job? After you look for a job, after you put your application in, I want you to do me a favor. And this is going to sound strange. I want you to stop thinking about the job. And I want you to start, start thanking God for the job. And then... I want you to change your whole worship. I want you to get up every day and start worshiping God and start worshiping Him for who He is. Because guess what? If I worship him for who he is, that means who he is got to come in and take care of. Come on, somebody. That's what I'm gonna do. You can be seated. That's what I'm gonna do. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm not getting up another day stressing about why I don't have a job. I'm not gonna get up another day stressing about what I ain't got. I'm not gonna get up another day worrying about why? 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 Why am I gonna do that? Because my pillar's gonna change the God. And so when I lay down on the pillow, I'm laying down on God. Come on, somebody, right? So, somebody ain't hearing me today. You're awakened, wait a minute. The blessing of the Lord and the riches and no sorrow. My worship changed when my speech changed. See, some of y'all scared to say it. I said my worship changed when my speech changed. 
No disrespect. Please don't take this the wrong way. But get your behind off of Facebook. Asking everybody to pray for you. Asking everybody to look out for you. Wait a minute. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Get your butt off of Facebook. Asking everybody, y'all pray for me. I ain't working. Things are tough. What you want to do? Get on Facebook and tell them y'all worship with me. Y'all worship with me because I... Y'all worship... God, I wish I had some help with me. Stop feeling sorry for everybody. I don't need you to hug me. I need you to hand me. Give me your hand so we can shout together. Come on. I need somebody to shout with me. I don't need you feeling sorry for me. Stop hugging me, taking me in a corner chair and trying to tell me it's going to be all right. No, 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 no. You putting my worship on the problem. I need somebody to come up to me. And I need somebody to pull me out and say, wait a minute, apostle, the devil is a liar. If he's done it before, he can do it again. seconds. Somebody know I need somebody. Get somebody by the hand. Say, we ain't feeling sorry no more. We get ready to come out. Woo! Hey! Hey! Put those hands together. You gotta fix folks and tell them this ain't no doom dance. This a praise dance. And I need somebody to take 15 seconds and tell them this is a dance of not of doom, but this a dance of coming out. <laughs> this a dance of walking in my blessing. Uh, this a dance of knowing that God got my. together. Come on, Jessica. You better praise him. Different dance. I got a different dance. Put them hands together.
Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated. Come on. Woo! This is pure. See, you shout differently. You shout differently. Come on, Connie. You shout differently when your worship is back vertical. At every step you take, the shout become pure. Come on, somebody lift your feet with me. And your shout become pure because your vertical worship is focus back on God and I ain't gonna stop stressing and I realize God got me my feet begin to get a different shout I begin to see things one come on two three four five six put those hands together Somebody do me a quick favor and I'm gonna hurry up. Do me a favor and point straight up. Come on and look up at him and say, the worship goes back to you. Uh, you getting ready to get all my worship before anybody does. Uh, as a matter of fact, let me tell you, I'm gonna try to reach you. I know I can't, uh, but I'm gonna hold my hands up uh, and I'm gonna leap one time uh, and I'm gonna tell him uh, I'm giving it back. do something real quick it just hit me elder yana come here a minute because i, I want to i remember when you first came and you became a daughter and it's been over almost is it been almost 20 years that's your sister over there yeah 
Matter of fact, Sid, you want to say yes, Lord, come be with her real quick. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, come on, you be with your sister. Now, leave your shoes off. You're good. You're all, you're all right. I've seen your feet before. Come on, don't, don't, be, don't be ashamed now. <laughs> but I had this vision, Yana, just now. Grab about a hand, Keita. And I remember when your face curse came here, you used to battle crisis. Single mother with two kids. Financially trying to figure out what's going on. And I've watched God over the years just set you up. See, God said, I didn't bless you, I set you up. See, there are people that get blessed, but there are people that get set up. And when they get set up, God said, you don't know how I'm going to surprise you. You don't know when I'm going to show up, God said. And then you don't know what I'm going to show up with. And so in the midst of it, God said, I remember, I think it was nine years, you didn't have one crisis attack. And, but the enemy now is trying to say, come back in this and come back in that. But God said, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to tell the enemy, you don't get no praise. You don't get no worship. You don't get... Uh-oh. 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 My marriage don't get no worship like that. My children don't get no worship like that. My grandchildren don't get no worship like that. My job cutting my hours don't get no worship like that. Because ever since I came into Christ, he's always been first. And God said, come on, remember what I've been for you. Remember what I've done for you. Remember what I healed you from. Woo. Two, one.
seated. Come on. Give him a great big hand again, everybody. Come on. Listen. Let me get that. Somebody do me a favor. Everything that you think has gotten God's worship, I want you to put it to the side. Matter of fact, you look at it one more time. Turn to the side and look at everything you know been taken to worship of God. And look at it on the side and say, this is my last time looking at you. Because from this moment on, I'm looking up. 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 Somebody look up. Somebody look up. I'm looking up. Somebody look up. I'm looking up. I'm looking up. to say I'm looking up God you deserve all my worship all my adoration I dare you look up for a moment I dare you to look up and say my head is held high shock by man When you look up and you begin to stomp, you're reminding Satan he's under your feet. You may be seated.
See, when you begin to believe what God said, and you begin to tell God, you say, Satan is under my feet. I found out terror. I found out, watch this. I found out, Apostle Juni, that there are seasons in your life when God needs to remind you that Satan is under your feet. He anoints your stump. And your stump begins to get anointed. Your feet begins to get anointed. To tread on everything that's not right. To tread on everything trying to hit you from doing what they're doing. And all your feet can see is victory. All your feet can do is run to victory. All your feet can do. Give him a great big hand. God bless you. Just real quickly, let me get these couple of points. Hey, Shabbat. your hands together for him, everybody. Come on. Well, things kind of went in a different direction, so I'm going to say these couple comments. I dare somebody scream out, God, you getting your worship back? Come on.
Everybody say back. I dare everybody give it back to him. He's all around us, Elder Bryant. There's heat around us. Some of you gotta feel heat like you've never felt before. Jackie Sublet, stand for me, evangelist. For I hear the Lord say these words to you. And I just thought they were so, so wonderful. I stood in the pulpit a few minutes ago and I heard the Lord say, tell Jackie to stand up. And tell her that no matter what she's been through in life, no matter what pain she's experienced, she has always found a way back to worshiping me. And he said to tell you, Jackie, that in this season, I'm going to make things happen for you that you can't make happen. I'm going to bless you greater than you can ever imagine. Come on, somebody help me. Let's turn our hearts back to God. As we close on Matthew 6 and 21, I have to teach this another time because this is not the way God wants us to do it. And I'm okay. Stand up, Dwayne. I need my worship back. Prophet, prophet, I need my worship back. I need my worship more than what you're going through. I need my worship more than your children. I need my worship back. I need it back, just said God. I'm telling somebody here today, if you would give God back his worship first, if you would go back to being vertical and let his worship be more important, your life will see things differently. Thus said the Lord, keep playing it, but turn it on a little bit. For thus said the Lord, you have said that I have experience with you. But God say today, you will have a different experience. You will have experience where nothing will be more important to you but my worship. You will have experience today that nothing will matter but me, thus said God. God is looking for a people who will now put him back first. Yeah, 
If you're worshiping the title, take it off. She come out. For where your treasures is, there your heart, your wishes, your desire, that on which life centers. And how many of y'all know our treasure is God? I can't hear you. How many of you know our treasures is God? Yeah. Bump these titles if God ain't true. If he's not the admiration of my worship, the adoration of my worship, I could care less about a title. Let's close on this. There's experience coming. How many of you would like to experience God greater than you ever have? Come on, everybody, lift your hands up. That's what we want. We give restoration back to you. We give worrying about the people back to you. Habo, shabo. Come on, just for a minute. You can put your hands down. But just for a minute, open your mouth up and worship him. All over the building. On one accord. Put your hands down if they get tired. But keep your mouth open. Just shout glory to him. So let's close on this note. The greatest sin. Then, put it up there for me. The greatest sin then. Is directing that adoration elsewhere. Not only because it insults God. But also it because, because it insulates our hearts from the light we created, we were created to rebuild in. When you give worship to something else, when you admire or you give adoration to something more important than God, it insulates your heart. 
It prevents you from going from glory to glory. You will be limited at the level that you experience God. It insulates you. It doesn't allow God to penetrate your heart as much. Why would God penetrate your heart with more of him when you're giving worship to something else? Why does he need to give you more authority when you're giving worship to something else? Why do you need to experience more of his presence when you're worshiping something else? Father, we thank you today. Oh. I heard the Lord say in my spirit, this is an unshakable house.